Camden Palm. I grew up here in Calabasas and I'm currently a fourth year student at UC Santa Barbara. Today, I am honored to introduce Mary Sue Maurer, our mayor of Calabasas. This is her third term serving as our mayor, and she was first elected to our city council in 2005, re-elected for two subsequent terms in 2009 and 2013. During her time here on the council, she has focused her efforts in environmental, public, health and safety programs, along with senior and educational issues. She has initiated the involvement of the LA County Community Choice Energy Program, had a senior task force initiate the building of the senior center that we have right over there, along with implementing emergency health and safety protocol at local public schools. On top of this, she is the center director at the California Conservation Corps, located in Camarillo, and advocated for the creation of a grant program for helping public schools ease budget cuts. On top of this, she takes time to connect with her community members. And I say this from experience because when I was nine years old, with my Girl Scout troop, I went to a mock city council workshop. Here she gave her time and first insight into community building on a city level. Today I would like to welcome to the stage, Mary Sue Maurer. Thank you so much, Camden. Camden is living evidence that young people that grow up in the city of Calabasas can succeed, and she's doing a great job. She's going to be one of the next generation of environmental leaders. So thank you, Camden. Thank you. Well, welcome to the City of Calabasas 2017 State of the City Address. As your outgoing mayor, it's my privilege to present a year in review under this last term. I'd like to thank the Calabasas Chamber of Commerce. Each year, they partner with us on bringing this to the residents. And Pamela Cassell in particular, and Chelsea Jordan, all the board members, all the deputies, and the businesses that participate. Thank you very much. I have the pleasure to serve with the best council members one could have. Let me introduce Mayor Pro Tem Fred Gaines. <laughs> council Member James Bazagian. <laughs> council Member David Shapiro. <laughs> and Council Member Alicia uh, Weintraub. <laughs> the day to day operations of a city are run by the staff. And heading our staff is City Manager Tony Corrales. And joining him, we have a variety of our department heads. We have Jeff Rubin, Maureen Tamari in the back, Robert Yalda, Dr. Gary Lysick, Deborah Steller, Jim Jordan. Now, those are just our department heads. We have 81 full staff people and 174 part-time staff people. And I would like any and all of them to just please stand up so we can show our gratitude towards you today. <laughs> now, I have members of my family here, and I'd like to introduce them. By now, you should know them. I have my mother, Norma Maurer. Mom, stand up. <laughs> my brother, Don, who was my catcher. My three sons, Martin, Neil, and Derek. Come on. My sister, Ellen, her husband, Dave, and my niece, Jessica. Stand up. I really appreciate your love and support all year long. Now, there are a number of dignitaries present, and I'd like to introduce all of them. If you will hold your applause until the end, and we can let them know how much we appreciate them. We have, from U.S. Diane, Senator Dianne Feinstein's office, uh, Jeannie Chang, Congressman Ted Liu's office, Ariel Friedman, from Henry Stern's office, Jeremy Wolf. Representing Matt DeBabinet, Assembly Member's office, is Ian Anderson. From the Los Angeles County Fire Department, I'd like to introduce Assistant Chief Anthony Williams. There he is. 
And from our Lost Hills Sheriff Department, we have Chief John Benedict. It's good to see you here. Captain Joshua Ty. From the Las Virginas Unified School District, we have Dr. Dan Stepanowski and two board members. We have Leslie Stein and Linda Vengas. From the city of Agora Hills, we have Mayor Pro Tem William Kohler and Council Member Linda Northrup. From the city of Hidden Hills, we have Council Member Marv Landon and City Manager Carrie Kalman. From the Las Virginas Municipal Water District, we have Charles Casperi. And from the Las Virginas Malibu Council of Governments, this is a joint organization of local cities, we have the Executive Director, Terry Tipple. And I'd like to welcome all the members of the Calabasas Rotary Club, a great partner with the city. We also have our city attorney, Scott Howard. Now, let's give them a hand. And one of my favorite groups to see at these kind of city events are our former council members, many of whom were responsible for creating our city. We have with us Lucy Martin. There's Lucy. Dennis Washburn. Marvin Lapata. Michael Harrison. There's Michael. Thank you, Michael and Barry Groveman. Welcome to you all. Our city is strengthened by the number of volunteers we have. We have seven different commissions that are represented by our residents, a number of task force and different councils. If you volunteer for our city, will you please stand up and let us thank you. That's a very impressive group. All right. It's my pleasure to bring forward Girl Scout troops from a variety of local troops to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Audience, attention. Please stand for the presentation of the colors. Color Guard, attention. Color Guard, advance. Representing the Girl Scouts, we have daisies, brownies, juniors, cadets, seniors, and ambassadors from the Girl Scout troops number 1826, 3606, 1786, 116, 2296, and 1036. Welcome, girls. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Color Guard, post the colors. Color guard, face the colors. Color guard, salute the colors. I'd like 
going to take a few minutes to share with you and the girls, you may be seated audience, about how important the Girl Scouts role has played in instilling a sense of confidence in young girls. But let's get a sense of how big and wonderful this program is. It has motivated me to create a mock city council meeting for Girl Scouts. Troops come in and they get to be at the dais, be part of a decision-making process on a mock city council agenda. They get to speak from the dais as, under the public comment period. And of course, they get to see the televised portion. If you look closely, you can see Camden in one of these early photos of one of the council meetings. That was a long time ago, Camden. So the Girl Scouts program, there are over 1.8 million of you across the United States and 43,000 in the greater LA area alone. The Girl Scouts of greater LA has the highest number of gold award Girl Scouts. A gold award is the equivalent of an Eagle Scout in Boy Scouts. In their 106th year, the Girl Scouts is the leading expert on girl leadership development. 50% of women business leaders were Girl Scouts, as were 80% of women technology leaders. 76% of the United States senators in America have been Girl Scouts. And 100% have been Secretary of States, including Hillary Clinton, who was the first woman to be nominated for a presidential candidacy. Virtually every female US astronaut has been a Girl Scout. That means that 40 of the 114 US flight missions have had Girl Scouts aboard. And from Calabasas, we have 45 troops, 422 Girl Scouts, and 245 adult leaders. You should be very proud of your participation in the Girl Scouts program. Now, usually when the mayor gives this address, they select a citizen of the year. And it's announced at the end of the meeting. But I'm going to be doing something a little different because you're here tonight. And I'm going to share who my selection is with you right now. Now, this individual has been a role model for Girl Scouts for over two decades. She has worked with 20 different Girl Scouts to do their gold award. She organizes the participation of the Girl Scouts in the food drive. Did any of you participate last week in the food drive? Raise your hand. Excellent. The food that the Girl Scouts collected went to the West Valley Food Pantry. This citizen of the year trains Scouts to do Pledge of Allegiances. Hmm. Have any of you been to a city council meeting and led the Pledge of Allegiance? Raise your hand. Very good. This individual works for the Las Virginis <laughs> Unified School District and does volunteer work at Bay Laurel. She is a mother and an extraordinary mentor to girls and young women. In general, she selfishly gives of her time to the young girls in our community. It's my pleasure to announce my choice for Citizen of the Year, Michelle Faulkner. now to see all the happy faces. Michelle, I mean, I just scratched the surface of what you've done for these young women in our community. And I know you need to get them out and get going, but we couldn't let the night go by with sharing our gratitude. 
And we have a surprise for you. You already did. <laughs> <laughs> it's not this plaque commemorating this event. We have special guests for you. Your children, Aaron, Sarah, David, and Simon. <laughs> Are you kidding? <laughs> Did you want to say anything? She's a little hoarse, actually. I had no idea. I am, I am shocked that my kids are here because I haven't seen them all in a long time. All I can say is, uh, in life, we repeat the behaviors that reward us. And that's why I've been a Girl Scout leader for 20 years, because these girls are amazing. And I'm going to cry. Um, <laughs> and I love watching them grow up and find their voice. And they are all really wonderful girls. Thank you. I'm shocked. <laughs> I'm Thank shocked. you. Thank you very much. It'll probably be no surprise to you at all. There's going to be a slight theme woven into my remarks. It's going to be the role of women as leaders in their communities and empowering young girls and women to be leaders. There's a hashtag, you too can lead. And every time you see that hashtag, I want you to reflect on what I'm talking about and the opportunities that might be available to you. I'm going to start with, I think, one of the most important pieces of ordinance that the city of Calabasas has ever passed. And it's called the Public Engagement Ordinance. There's only two other cities in the entire United States have anything like this ordinance. And what it does is allows and encourages the public to be engaged much earlier in the review development process. Now, the city council tasked myself and council member Alicia Weintraub with some of our planning development staff to work together. And we worked beautifully together. It took six months to create a set of guidelines for the rest of the council to begin reviewing. And the process has included multiple reviews by the Planning Commission and the Council. The end result is while we follow the guidelines we're required to in noticing the public when a development or redevelopment project is coming your way, the public felt that we were doing it a little too late. So we've created two additional public meetings that will happen at the beginning of the process. This allows the public to provide input on large scale projects early and often in the process. It ultimately will save money for developers and their resources because of ins instead of waiting till the end of the process to present the information to the public, they're getting valuable input at the beginning. So I want to thank Councilmember Alicia Weintraub for that collaboration. <laughs> Our city is a model for fiscal responsible local cities. We continue to receive the triple A credit rating, the highest rating you can get from Moody's and Standard & Poor's for a city of our size. We have a platform on our website called OpenGov. You can go into this website and look at where every single dollar has been spent of your hard-earned tax dollars. You can look at the, the expenses by departments. You can look at forecasted budgets and actual budgets from year to year. I encourage all of you to take a close look at what we've done with your money. Now, this type of transparency and our accurate forecasting has resulted in, for the 12th year in a row, an award for our financial reporting. I want to thank uh, Dr. Lysak for his hard work and uh, the members of his department. We're very proud of how we manage our taxpayer dollars. Community development and economic stimulus. This year, the council approved a three-story hotel. We anticipate that we might receive as much as $600,000 a year in revenue. And for a city of our size, that's a lot of money. We can take that money and put it into programs, into our roads, into our parks, to our schools. It's a lot of money. This particular development also includes a very large parking lot. 
In fact, it's of such a large size and it's free and it's open that we're encouraging people to take the commuter bus that stops there and goes straight to downtown LA. There's also free parking available for hikers, bicyclists, and equestrians to park any time of the day. We have a number of different headquarters in Calabasas, and our newest is Cody International, a beauty product company that will be opening their West Coast headquarters at the beginning of the next year. Two of our auto dealerships, BMW and Audi, have moved into larger spaces or are modernizing and expanding. We have a number of new retail shops and new food establishments. In fact, you might guess that Jenny's Splendid Ice Creams is owned by a woman. In, in Calabasas, there are a lot of women-owned businesses. And throughout the United States, over 10 million businesses are owned by women. But the largest companies, known as Fortune 500, only a small percentage, 6.4%, are run by women. So there's a lot of room for us to improve on the business side of running businesses. Public safety and emergency preparedness. This is an area that the city of Calabasas makes a priority, the safety of its residents and the safety of their property. We just conducted our 10th annual walk-in flu clinic at Founders Hall, and I'm very proud that I initiated that program 10 years ago in preparation for a mass inoculation, some type of bioterrorism attack or a flu outbreak. And I have to say, our residents are very well trained. They come with their paperwork. They come in and out through the lines. You can have your flu shot in Calabasas in less than three minutes. <laughs> Crime Prevention Expo. We have a close relationship with Lost Hills Sheriff Station, and here is one of his deputies presenting a number of different tips, everything from home and care and personal security, cybersecurity, identity protection, how to spot phone or online scams, and this we taped and is available on our website. We have a community emergency response team of residents who train regularly and make themselves available should we have a large-scale disaster or emergency. When those terrible fires roared through Santa Rosa, one of the lessons we learned was that notification of mandatory evacuations is so important. We sent out a postcard to all of our residents reminding them to provide us with a phone number, a landline, a cell number, an email, so that they can get timely information in an immediate manner. As I mentioned, we enjoy our partnerships with both the Los Angeles County Sheriff Department and the County of Los Angeles Fire Department. These are known as non-traditional occupations for women. That is a type of job where 25% or less of the workers are women. So both of these uh, organizations have made great strides in trying to attract more women, and they've started at a younger age. The LA County Fire Department um, has a recruitment camp for teen girls, and you could go and see what it's like to be a structural firefighter. They also have a fire explorer program. Now in my day job, I run a youth development program. And it's an, a program where young adults between 18 and 25 can test a variety of different outdoor type uh, jobs, including responding to emergencies, um, building trails. But we are most known for our firefighting crews. And they are trained under CAL FIRE to be type one um, wildland firefighters. They fight out in the forest. And I'm very pleased to announce that I just completed the two week training course classroom to be a type one wildland firefighter. And if I can do it, you can do it. 
The Los Angeles Sheriff's Department also has a youth program for 14 to 20 year olds, the Deputy Explorer Program. And in this case, you're training at a police academy setting and you get to experience the excitement and the importance of being a law enforcement representative. Media, library, and information systems. This department communicates to our residents through a variety of different means. We have a newsletter, a website. You can see our Facebook account. We have other social media. We have an emergency radio station, 1630 AM. You might try it just to test it. And we have CTV, our own television channel. CTV recently won an award for the Every 15 Minutes program about teen drunk driving. Our Calabasas Library has programs for all ages. We have story times for babies and preschoolers, movies, crafts, and game days for children and teens, book clubs, cooking demos, lectures, and movies for adults and seniors, summer reading program. The joint, we have a joint use agreement with the city of Hidden Hills and the Los Virginis Unified School District. <laughs> That's our librarian, Barbara Lockwood. And we recently received a state grant for an Oculus Rift real, virtual reality set. And these are those devices that you put on your head and over your eyes and you put your fingers into them and you plug it into a computer and it can take you to all different kinds of places. You can go see Yosemite. You can go to the, to the White House. The most popular time is after school when the teenagers come in to play games. Um, if you did want to check it out, come by during the week and let them know that this is what you want to experience. 83% of librarians are women. These are people who love to read, love to research a variety of different topics, and love to help people. Outstanding youth, adult, and family programs. Here we are celebrating the Calabasas Senior Center's first year anniversary. Our senior center hosts a variety of over 100 different classes and excursions. We have at least 30 special interest clubs, such as hiking cards, games, movies, and book clubs. They hold socials and luncheons. And yes, we even had a surprise visit by the king himself. <laughs> that was a fun day. They have a website and a monthly newsletter that you can sign up for to get more details and more information. Our Calabasas Creekside Clubhouse Preschool just held its 18th graduation. That means that those early graduates are now graduating from college. We get great reports from the elementary school teachers in our area about how ready our kindergartners are. We have the Pumpkin Festival, again with the Calabasas Chamber of Commerce, and over 13,000 people attended this year. Our Calabasas Tennis and Swim Center continues to operate at capacity with both tennis and health memberships. We are committed to the special needs residents in our community and have a variety of different programs. This year, we participated in Tippecop Fundraiser with the Lost Hill Sheriff Station, and I want to acknowledge John Bingham, one of our staff members, and his family in the back there, who has kind of spearheaded our support of the Special Olympics. And John, thank you for that. <laughs> this year, the National Alliance for the Mentally Ill will be hosting a family to family program. This nonprofit organization provides free programming for those that struggle with a mental illness or for their family members who have a loved one with a mental illness. The program that starts in January, family to family, is for residents of Calabasas. Juan De Anza Park, my favorite park, is the hub of all recreational activities. 
classes, sport leagues, camps, joint use agreements with the school district, and facility rentals. All of our park operations come out of the hub of Juan Dianza. And our residents so enjoy so many of our parks, and so do the dogs. Now, speaking of mm, entertainment, <laughs> Um, we have the fifth annual Calabasas Dodger Night, and yours truly threw out the first pitch. Now, my pitching coach is in here somewhere, Ed Albrecht, and he can attest that I can throw a mean straight strike. <laughs> well, let's see what happened this time. And catching for Mayor Maurer is her brother, Don Maurer. All right, Your Honor, the mound is yours. Great pitch. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you to all from Calabasas for joining us here at Dodger Stadium tonight. Needless to say, after all the practice I put in and my pitching coach, all the time he spent on me, that wasn't the best pitch for me. In fact, I was, I was very disappointed. I shuffled back to my seat with my head low. My dear mother saw that I was sad and put her arm around me and said, Mary Sue, don't be sad. That was the best intentional walk pitch I've ever seen. <laughs> I didn't have the heart to tell her that the baseball league does not allow intentional walks anymore. <laughs> Let's take a look at some of the women athletes that are just doing a wonderful job. The US women's soccer team has won three World Cup titles and four Olympic gold medals. The Los Angeles Sparks basketball team has five final appearances and three championships. And top female athletes from both Calabasas High School and Viewpoint have gone on to collegiate successes. So if you're playing a sport, keep playing. I played softball until I was 32 and pregnant. So <laughs> cultural and education enrichment opportunities. We had our spring 20th Calabasas Fine Arts Festival. We have the Sunset Summer Concerts, four concerts on Calabasas Lake. And I'd like to thank Richard Sherman and the Calabasas Park Homeowners Association for graciously opening up this park for us to enjoy. Our senior center has a speaker series that sells out immediately every year. This year, we had a linguist, a pirate expert, a Kurdish representative, and here we see funny man and weather forecaster, Fritz Coleman. We've had the Calabasas Film Festival here in Calabasas, and it continues to grow in popularity creek cleanup events. And this picture is striking to me in that 10 years ago, you would have seen shredded plastic bags hanging from the trees in this creek. But since we've banned plastic bags, we are not seeing the problem that we used to. It's evidence that this program has succeeded. Teaching children the importance of a healthy, clean earth happens every year during our annual Earth Day celebration and Green Expo. And we had our annual Arbor Day celebration. Now, <laughs> there's a few people laughing. You might have to look closely because you might not recognize them. But those three little guys there with shovels planting a tree with former assembly member Fran Pavley just like that tree have grown up to my three large sons right here. <laughs> we have strong partnerships with our schools. The Las Virginas Unified School District and Viewpoint. 
We work with their administrators, with their principals, their teachers, and their parents. This year, we funded LVUSD schools to the tune of $500,000. That money goes to shuttle services, crossing guards, and each school gets a discretionary amount of money to uh, use as they please. Now, Las Virginas Unified School District recently won the prestigious Green Ribbon Award for Environmental Stewardship. This is an award that's only given um, to the schools that have outperformed all other school districts. They were only one of nine to receive it in California of a pool of 1,000. They're continuing addressing pollution around the schools. They have a new policy asking parents to either arrive later in the day and not sit in their cars and let them idle or turn off their cars. It's very clear that the emissions from cars damage young lungs. They've also started a campaign to have students use recyclable containers for their lunches so they don't add to the waste stream during the lunch, lunch period. So let's look at the school district and the women's role there. All three assistant superintendents are women. Four of the five board members are also women. Las Virginas Unified School District principals that are female are at Calabasas High School, Bay Laurel, and Chaparral Elementary School. Four of the five assistant principals in Calabasas are female, and 75% of the teachers are women. If you are one of these women from the Las Virginas Unified School District, will you please stand up so that we can let you know how much you appreciate your service. That's wonderful. Public Works. Public Works has been very busy. We broke ground in March of 2015 on the Lost Hills Interchange Improvement Project. Has anyone been traveling over Lost Hills lately? It's been going on for a while, and just this week we started demolition on the old section crossing. We're adding five, a five-lane crossing overhead. We made improvements to the on and off design to the 101. We've made safe access for all pedestrians and Best news of all, we're expecting completion by July of 2044. <laughs> no, no, 2018. <laughs> we have uh, celebrated the opening of the Las Virginas Road Scenic Corridor Widening Project. This project provided two travel lanes in each direction, continuous bike lanes and sidewalks, and beautifully landscaped uh, medians. We just started a new project, the Malibu Hills Road Green Street Project. Now, public works is another kind of career that is considered a non-traditional job for a woman. Engineers, um, transportation experts, um, environmental scientists, and things like that have traditionally seen a low number of women participants. These days, I'm happy to say that 50% of the graduates in a degree with science and engineering are women. And the Girl Scouts of America just announced a new program last week. They are determined to close the gender gap in STEM careers. And STEM stands for science, technology, engineering, and math. math. Very good. The Girl Scouts are using a multi-year initiative to put 2.5 million young girls through a STEM pipeline by the year 2025. Environmental leadership. This is the last area that I'll be covering. Our city was founded for a couple of principles. One, local control of development decisions. And the other was the commitment that our founders had on environmental stewardship. And I'd like to think that we have continued in this area to provide leadership. 
I'm going to start with climate change. I don't expect that the founders of the city expected that we would be facing such a challenge in Calabasas in climate change. But with the heating of the earth and the drying of the fuels, we are seeing a longer fire season, stronger and fiercer, more destructive fires, and more frequent fires, and demonstrated that with up in the wine country this season, where communities that didn't think they had, or that they were in vulnerable areas were rolled over with the firestorm. Last week, the US government released a climate science report. Every four years, they do this. And this year, as in the four years pre previously, they have deemed that warming of the Earth is likely human-made. So that poses a couple challenges to us here in Calabasas. One, how are we going to respond to this new wildfire reality? And two, what can we do to re reduce our carbon emissions? This was discussed in great detail last week and continuing this week at the UN Climate Change Conference in Bonn, Germany. But here at Calabasas, we need to look closer at home to see what we can do. CAL FIRE has identified the most extreme high fire hazard zones in the state of California. Calabasas is 100% within the red zone, meaning we live in the most vulnerable areas. <laughs> Cities like ours across the state are going to be looking at some of our land use policies and codes to see if, in fact, we are doing the best job we can to protect properties and lives. Will we be evaluating all the homes that are front the wildland urban interface development areas? We're doing a number of things to reduce our carbon emission footprint. We held a public forum on electric and alternative vehicles. Experts came and discussed the future of electric cars, solar cars, driverless cars, and future bikes, and the public transportation of tomorrow. We just installed a new charging station here at City Hall, and another charging station at an old town park and ride in Calabasas. Um, this is a free parking lot, and it also includes the charging stations. And you might notice that a couple of us are holding up a card. I have one with me right now. Does anyone recognize this type of card? Tap. tap. Who's that tap? Tap, tap. Tap card, James. <laughs> this is a tap card. This is required to run our metro system, the, the buses or the subways. And if you haven't had a chance to explore the amazing infrastructure that's in place right now to get you to downtown, to Dodger games, uh, to USC games, <laughs> um, please get a tap card. Our new reclaimed water irrigation system has saved 40% in water usage. And we're trying to tackle the problem with plastic bottles. Over 1,500 plastic bottles are used every second in the United States. These hydration stations allow reusable bottles to be refilled with filtered water instantly. We provided grants to some of our schools and we're placing them in our parks around the city. We were the first city in Los Angeles County to join the Community Energy Program. This is where residents can choose to purchase green energy such as solar and wind directly through Southern California Edison. This countywide effort will help California achieve the goal of getting 50% of electricity from renewable sources by 2030. Southern California Edison will continue to manage the distribution grid, the billing, and the maintenance of the lines, but the residents in Calabasas will now be able to choose if they want to stick with South SoCal Edison or join a blend of renewable energy. And at any point, our residents can opt out of the program. Finally, the city of Calabasas initiated a green business program. 
There are no fees involved. It's a three-year certification process and it allows businesses to create their own measures for reducing waste and toxic chemicals. They will receive this decal that they could put in their window and they will be promoted by the city of Calabasas. That concludes, for the most part, my review for this year. It's been another excellent year here at the city. I want to, again, thank my colleagues on the city council, our city staff, the Chamber of Commerce, all the volunteers. You're wonderful to work with. But in closing, I just want to have, uh, have a few remarks with the girls. Thank you, again, for being here. In fact, I have something in my pocket that you may not know about, but you have each, for participating in today's State of the City Address, received this badge that you will be getting today. It's our logo that has been reformatted to be a Girl Scout badge. So I want to thank you and congratulate you. So I was a Girl Scout. And I think that being a Girl Scout is great. I had a lot of adventures. And it gave me tools to be more confident. And one thing I want you to think about is having a profession in public service like me, working with people, serving the people, making your communities better, making your state better, making your country better. But if you decide on a different career, maybe there's something you saw here that might be interesting. Maybe you've already decided what you want to be, and maybe you don't have any idea whatsoever. The Girl Scouts have provided you with a tool for leadership, and you need to exercise it. You need to learn to speak up and speak out. A 10-year-old Girl Scout this year went on a field trip. And at this field trip, she noticed that the boys were up front raising their hands to answer the questions or ask questions. And they were engaged in dialogues with the adults that were present. And the other girls were sitting at the back, behind, quiet, watching for the most part. And that bothered her. And she went home and talked to her mother. And she went back to her troop and shared her observations. And the other girls recognized they had seen something like that, too where the boys were dominating the discussions by raising their hand. Well, this girl in her troop in Washington, D.C., worked with the Girl Scout Council and developed a new badge. It's called Raise Your Hand Badge. And this badge is easy to get. You have to agree to raise your hand in the classroom and get three of your friends to raise their hands, too, and together with the Girl Scouts providing you with leadership tools, you need to practice by raising your hand. I'd like to see everybody who has a daughter or a granddaughter, a niece, a cousin, raise your hand. Show them how it's done, how high they can be. And I want you, if you want to be a leader, if you want to exercise your voices, raise your hands. Let's see them up high. Good. You want to be heard, too. Excellent. Well, thank you again for coming, all of you. It's been a pleasure. And I know next year will be as wonderful as well. Thank you.